Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we were discussing about common source amplifiers with diode connected loads and the previous lecture we spoke about uh, the same amplifier with a PMOS diode connected load and um, how different the gain equation for that would be. It was not much different what it was. It was uh, just AV equaled minus root of mu n w over l 1 over mu p w over l 2 okay uh, not considering the body effect and channel of modulation so um, we also had another um, form for uh, of equation for this gain it was av equaled vgs2 minus vth2 the mod of that over vgs1 minus vth1 and uh, we did speak about um, if, if, if for example the gain is 10 uh, the overdrive required for the second transistor would be uh, 10 times the overdrive required for the first transistor and how that is not uh, that, that'll kill your output swing so um, as promised we're going to be talking about a story um, an interesting story uh, in this lecture um, let's see how how a few scientists went around trying to reduce this dependency of 10 times or whatever the gain times the overdrive of the first transistor so um, let's let's intuitively get to the result that they got to it's the same team of scientists which were sitting at a table um, remember our story about common source amplifier story about gain lecture yeah the same team so um, it goes like this well we cannot sacrifice the gain so uh, 10 has to be there okay so if we cannot sacrifice the gain that means one of the most prime equations governing the equation of gain is I1 equals I2 correct and then we equate those and then we come to this equation so what we want to do is we don't want to reduce the total current in the circuit if we reduce the total current in the circuit the gain might go down so let's not do that we have two devices here okay and this is the this is the uh, first device carries I1 and the same current flows through the second device as well but what if what if we made this transistor here right here carry less of a current as compared to this transistor right what the, the total current right the total current in the circuit is going to be I1 that is that is going to be same but instead of I just I2 why not add some other component okay some other device which can share uh, what I1 is equal to right so randomly they came up with a with, with um, a division of current saying I1 could be equal to 0.25 times I1 that is for I2 plus 0.75 times I1 okay that is a new device and for the new device what they did they came up with this idea they said let's have a current source that feeds into this node here this node right here let me circle that with a different color okay so that node right there is being fed by this current source and the I2 current flowing through M2 okay now what will happen is I1 will be equal to IS plus I2 right because from the supply voltage to the ground the same current has to flow through okay so at this node we have a parallel connection of this diode connection transistor and this current source which add up to I1 okay now let's see how this affects our gain equation and thereby let's see if it helps us okay so um, let's let's uh, write this down here first uh, if you uh, watch the other lectures uh, carefully we derived the gain equation from here GM1 over GM2 now I'm not considering GMB2 because I'm neglecting body effect here okay and what do GMs stand for they stand for root of 2 mu n C ox W over L1 ID1 over 
root of 2 mu p z ox w over l 2 i d 2 okay and what is the relation between i d 2 is i 2 and i d 1 is i 1 so i d 2 equals i d 1 over 4 correct like it's 0.2 it's a quarter of the current carried by this transistor here right here so let's simplify this and what you get um, for ID 2 let's substitute ID 1 over 4 so if it's ID 1 over 4 the 4 goes up okay so what you get finally is a equation looking like this I would suggest that you write these equations along with me so that you're uh, not left behind and not confused I'm sorry I, I well, let me let me uh, go back here a bit sorry so rearranging those terms what we get is uh, root of 4 times mu n w over l 1 over mu p w over l 2 okay so this is a v okay let's simplify that further let's take the 4 outside when 4 comes outside it becomes 2 and the 2 if we go there if you push it there it goes a v over 2 okay is minus root of mu n w over l 1 over mu p w over l 2 now let's call this equation equation 1 okay and from the equation again what do we know um, ID 1 equals 4 times ID 2 correct let's write the large signal uh, equation for that it says mu n W over L 1 VGS 1 minus VTH 1 the whole squared equals 4 times mu P W over L2 VGS2 minus VTH2 the whole squared correct okay so if we rearrange these terms uh, put the mu n and mu p terms together here so you get mu n W over L and bring the 4 here as well so it's 1 over 4 over mu p W over L and this is 2 and this is 1 correct and this is VGS2 minus VTH2 over VGS1 minus VTH1. Okay? Alright, so uh, let's take the root here. And so the squares are gone from here. So what do you get? The 4 comes out again. Okay, so it's 1 over 2 times the root of that, right? It's mu n W over L1 over mu P W over L2 is equal to this term here. I'm not going to write it again, okay? But what is this term equal to from here, from equation 1? It is a AV over 2. Forget the minus sign for now, okay? So it's AV over 2. So half times AV over 2 equals VGS2 minus VTH2 over VGS1 minus VTH1, okay? Let's just call this uh, overdrive 2. And let's just call this overdrive 1. I just realized I should have done that long before. <laughs> so OV2 over OV1 is now AV over 4. Because of the inclusion of the current source, and thereby reducing the amount of current carried by the PMOS transistor, we have finally achieved something. I mean, the scientists sitting there finally achieved something really great. What does this mean now? It means the overdrive voltage of the second transistor can now afford to be equal to just 2.5 times the overdrive of the first transistor, right? So, you know, if you work with the numbers we had before, you had a 200 millivolts uh, value here, right? And what is 2.5 times 200 millivolts? Is it 500 millivolts, I think? Okay. So with the same example, if you're giving a 3 volts thing here, and you spend just 500 millivolts here and then 200 millivolts here you have a huge output swing 
uh, liberty, you know, you're giving a, a lot of space for the output swing to move around, and that's that's an amazing design. Okay, so what do we do here? We by the inclusion of a current source, we made this current source carry maximum current, and this thing carry a lesser current, thereby improving the dependency of the overdrive voltage of the second transistor as compared to the first one. Okay, so this is a great design they came up with, and I hope you understood it. Uh, try to work it out once, and I, I'm sure you'll you'll grasp it better. Uh, you'll understand it better. If you have any questions, just uh, write write comments on the YouTube links. Thank you so much.